Oh, what rubbish. Look, it's blue sky just there. That's shit. Sally, soon we're gonna just have to rev your tits off, I'm sorry. Come on. Power, thank you. Oh, doing 130 k an hour. Got the speed wobbles. <laughs> and we faster. Gee, it's sketchy riding this fucking thing at high speeds. Oh, anyway, job done. Even in the outback, just got massive, massive industry. Check that out, big silos. That's pretty cool. Fucking GoPro nines and GoPros full stop. I just had a flock of maybe eight or nine emus running next to me, awesome. I was filming, having a chat to them. Also did a backflip on my motorbike and then went to turn the GoPro off and the whole thing was just frozen the whole time. And it was taking me five minutes to fucking get it going again. Nobody buy a GoPro 9 if you're considering it. They just stuff up all day long. All right, so I've made it to Tilpa. I'm camping in the free campsite. Um, they have no more cabins left for me, and I've got three major problems. First one, flies everywhere. So that's number one, which we expected. Problem number two is they've ran out of petrol. Um, I only got four liters, and the, and the bowels have died. Um, which is not good because I did not have enough petrol to go to where I need to go to tomorrow and the closest one I'll probably only just get to but it's a major detour and in a complete wrong way so I'm not happy about that but we'll, um, we'll figure something out tonight and my third problem is finally this plastic after 10 to 15,000 cabs has been bashed around you know, with all my reinforcements under here it's finally given way and I've just got one burn mark on my bag and now I need to come up with a solution to fix that tonight because it's day one and I'm miles from home and I'm not going back. Um, I mean, I'll strap that bag to my head if I have to, but fuck, the apprentice adventurer at it again with a fucking disaster. Um, I don't even know what I'm going to do about that yet because that whole plastic is just warped. It's just, it's had too much damage done to it with all the heat. Um, but anyway, fingers crossed that we can get something going and we'll go get a pub feed down some ports and um, just kick ass, eh? Morning two, and I'm just leaving Tilpa. Um, this is the river that is causing all the dramas for me. Um, luckily, it's forced me to divert with my fuel issue anyway, so I have to go to one and only town that I can get to. However, this river is predicted to break the banks here this afternoon, and where I was camping is going to be underwater, and the road I need will be underwater. So I don't even know if I can get through everywhere yet. Um, this is the problem the outback. There's no rain here, but the water's flowing from Queensland. So fingers crossed, like this, that we can get through and um, I can continue on my trip. Otherwise, I'm totally, well, fucked, to be honest. So much more water in here than last year. 
So if there's one road open, we're going to take it and hope for the best. See you later, Tilpa. And 100 kilometers later, I'm going to Wilcannia, I believe it's called. Um, it's the only place with petrol that I can reach with my petrol situation. And this is the only road, which is the Tilpa West Road. That is apparently open, according to the locals. Everything else is underwater. So come on, my DRZ. We don't have time to be a submarine, not yet. It's only day two. This is adventure riding at its finest. Just a bloke, his bike, in the open, open countryside. I'm well and truly into the uh, outback areas now, even though it's quite green of all the rain I've had here. Um, ooh, a bit of a bumpy section, shit. Uh, lucky there's no fuel in it. Oh man, hopefully that's not busted. Yep, the classic weather app got it wrong again. It's fucking raining and all my wet weather gear is packed away because it wasn't meant to rain. So now I'm just copping <laughs> the rain and getting wet once again. Oh man, I'm not having good luck this trip at all. Just arrived in Will Kenya, I believe it said. Um, wasn't meant to come here, but due to the flooding and petrol crisis I had at Tilpa, this is my only way to get to hopefully continue north from this town of Tibaburra. Well, that's the line up for fuel. Luckily, I cut the line and now I've lost my glove, day. I don't know what I did to my freaking glove. How have I lost a glove? I'm about to take another detour. I went to Vulcania. I got my fuel. But one of the petrol stations was completely shut and everyone was lining up for um, fuel and all the trucks were trying to get diesel. Luckily I squeezed through for the unleaded. Um, but somehow I've lost a bloody glove and that's gone and I don't know where it was. I can't find it. Anyway, so now I'm away to Tibbetburra trying to get on the tarmac only because all the other roads are starting to close down. Hopefully I can just get there. It's four hours of riding. I hope it's like this, 120k an hour and just be fucking done with it and try to get to the South Australian border. Unfortunately, I'm not getting to do all the tra traps and the uh, remote roads I want to, but I've got to keep reminding myself this whole trip is about the Simpson Desert, so as long as I can get there and complete it, I'll still be happy with my trip. You know, given the circumstances of my first two days and all the um, rain, lack of fuel, like a lack of everything, it's um, some beast to get down in the dump, but I've just got to remind myself that um, I'm out here, I'm riding, yeah, I'm soaking wet, who gives a shit? My bike's running well still, that's all that matters. I'm sure the rain will disappear soon and then I'll dry out, but um, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so easy to feel down in the dump. It's not going to happen though, not for me, I'm happy as still. Welcome to White Cliffs. So I'm back in the town that I was meant to be earlier this morning, so kind of back on track. To see what this is all about. So I had to stop because it's getting so wet. Um, I'm in White Cliffs, I am soaking wet. I'm trying to stay positive, which I am. And just down in a can of bloody um, pink salmon, John West, it's the best. Anyway, it's tough going day two, so day two's been worse than day one now and we're still only halfway through it so i've got the shakes i'm cold hopefully my campsite it won't be raining so i have to sit in a tent wet all day or all night fingers crossed for me so i'm traveling on a road that says closed when wet it's not officially closed um i really don't have an alternative though so i'm just gonna follow this if i have to go slower i have to go slower there's nothing I could do about it, unfortunately. We're just gonna have to go, and I can't really backtrack because I'll run out of fuel. So it's a risk, it's definitely a risk, but um, we're just gonna, oh shit, it's slippery. Just gonna give it a go, and hopefully it's not, not flowing over with water anywhere, and it's not too muddy, because this stuff, once it gets onto your tire, it cakes on. It's real hard to get traction. About 130 kilometers of this road now, so let's give it a shot. The old Suzuki's working hard now. The blue tree of New South Wales outback. Pretty sure I read about that in 
geography in year 10. Someone has spray painted that tree blue. That's pretty cool. I'm between White Cliffs and Tibiburra at the halfway point, I'm assuming, as identified by the blue tree. Oh, my first kangaroos for the trip. Hey, buddies. Mum and Bubby. Go, buddies. Ah, oh, somebody else. Here I was thinking I was the only idiot on this road. A fellow explorer. On you, buddy. Oh, that's promising. You break down, someone will come by eventually. That was 100 kilometers of nobody. This is a um, dried out creek bed now. But only a few weeks ago, you can see how high the water was. All been pumping through here. And these are all through this track, like probably past no less than 50 riverbeds like this. Yet bone dry now. Crazy. Hard to think that all this terrain I'm riding over was all underwater four plus weeks ago. Um, there's evidence of it that it was here, but that's just phenomenal to have so much water. Just crazy. Don't you cows get scared and run in front of me. Oh, he's doing a big whizzer. <laughs> Another outback iconic landmark. Definitely all natural, that's for sure. How cool is this? It's a um, an old school clothesline or some sort of makeshift clothesline. <laughs> and it's got all spanners and wrenches stuck on it. Hammers. And an old wooden shovel hanging there. That's pretty cool. The tool tree. The tool tree. And... <laughs> This one's the baby tool tree. Oh, that's awesome. This is 110k south of Tibiburra. The tool trees. Oh, you silly bugger. Get off the road. You're going to be killed. Come on. Go on, get out of here. Go on. Shoot. Crazy bugger. You nearly got hit by that four wheel drive. See you buddy. I'm 20k out of Tibiburra, uh, Sturt National Park. Coming close towards uh, day two's end, but you can see the vast difference in landscape now. Um, far more inland, no trees. But I was here a year ago and it was definitely not green at all. Even though I was on a red dirt, all the rain and floods it has definitely, um, definitely transformed the landscape, that's for sure. Hey, look, there's me. He's got the wrong colour bike, this bloke. <laughs> How good is that? Finally arrived at Tibiburra, and I just found myself a riding buddy. I don't know how good he's going to go about in his spokes, though, but he looks like the real deal, so we'll let him be. If he wants to come, he can. Pretty cool little entry to the town. Look at this, open mud plain, nice and dry, bit of water over there, Sally's in heaven with all, the, with all the bloody jerry cans full, the poor girl, sorry buddy, how cool is this, this is on the way to Cameron Corner, just another one of the um, changing sceneries as you drive or ride along here. I had to pull over on the side of the road. I'm in Sturt National Park, but I couldn't find the campsite. I am on track though. I'm only about 5K where I should be. So I'm on track for the Simpson Desert still. I've quickly set up my tent. I've quickly unpacked the bike and done all the mechanics on that. What a shit house day. I still loved it. Rain, two diversions, nearly ran out of petrol, petrol station closed, lost a glove, found the glove. Looking like an idiot with this on, but bloody hell. Um, it obviously looks really bright behind me. Well, that's quite um, quite bloody picturesque. And it's like I photoshopped it, but it's actually looking this way. 
bloody dark as. <laughs> That's very deceiving. Anyway, I'm here. I'm going to be in a tent tonight. My backdrop is just simply desert as far as the eye can see with a few shrubs. Good night's sleep and we'll hit the road in tomorrow and hitting South Australia. So my father was the one that got me into adventure riding. Um, we got to do a couple of trips together in Victoria, but the idea was that we're going to travel the country together um, year in, year out. And that never got to happen because he passed away due to a bloody brain cancer a few years ago. So now I just ride solo and um, hit the landscape that we should have done together. I've actually posted one or three photos on this trip um, so he can sort of overlook the landscape that we would have seen together. Um, and what it says is, Dad, may you rest in peace overlooking this beautiful landscape that we were meant to see together but never got the chance. I now travel these roads alone without you and can only dream to do them again in the future. With your grandkids you never had the chance to meet, which is my son and daughter. Um, you were taken too early and I miss you daily from your loving son. Now that I've got this um, Apprentice Adventure website, as I said, bloody getting a tear in my eye. As I said, this is not to... Um, be a treasure hunt or anything but i'm going to post some longitude or latitude of where i'm standing right now just so you can see there's a sunrise that my father will see every morning and the road is only 30 meters in front of me now so i'll post a longitude and latitude and if anyone's ever driving through or riding through and they have the um the nav on and they feel like they want to stop and maybe just let me know but the photo's still there to be much appreciated i'll be back in a few years to check myself but hopefully the photos there in uh, many years to come. I mean, no disrespect to the tree or the land or anything like that. It's just purely my father never got to come out here and um, this is the only opportunity that I can sort of put something up. So yeah, flick me a comment on any of my videos and just let me know if it's 10 years down the track or one year down the track, that'll be much appreciated. Um, if not, well, you'll see you passing by anyway. Thank you. So day three, I'm gonna quickly head to Cameron's corner and take some shots. And then I'm gonna head south to Arkarula village and explore the top end of the Flinders. That's the plan anyway. I finally let my tyres down to 16 PSI each. I, um, I want to go lower but I'm just carrying too much weight and yeah it's a bit bouncy but I just feel that extra bit of pressure is going to help me out um, over rocks and stuff and not get a pinch flap. I've got my shadow and when, I, when it's right next to me, I'll try and film it. How embarrassing I look like an absolute wanker sitting all the way to the front of my bike of all this gear. People must just see me go, where the fuck is this bloke going on that small bike? Oddly enough, it's not a small bike, but it does look like it when I'm sitting on it. As I said, I'm six foot four and 100 plus kilos. <laughs> and I've got the leaning tower of a pizza on my bloody rear end. So we'll, um, I'll see if I get that into shot in one second. There's my um, my shadow, if you can see it. I don't know if that's going to turn out in the um, GoPro, <laughs> but my luggage is halfway up my back. Oh, I look like the shambles. What a legendary bike, though. What a sensational day after two days of pretty much rain, being my first two days. I've now got blue skies as far as the eye can see and hopefully for the rest of my trip according to my weather app. But that got the first two days wrong so I'll still plan for some rain. But this is Cameron Corner Road, I'm on the um, last stretch of it. It's a high crash zone because you go over these dunes and you can't see what's coming. I guess people stay in the middle of the road because it's smoother. But um, yeah, be careful on the bloody bikes because you'll definitely be dead having to head onto a four wheel drive or caravan. Well, that wasn't there last time. The giant bilby, I guess. You got the giant fucking sheep, the giant koala or something. I've seen a giant cow. And now we've got the giant bilby. Is it a bilby? Bandicoot. Giant bandicoot. Fuck, that's all right. Cameron's Corners Pub. And this is my entrance to South Australia. It looks like it's open. Please be open. I'm gonna gracefully push my motorbike from New South Wales to South Australia. <laughs> See you later, NSW. I made it. Awesome. So this is the point in Australia where South Australia, Queensland and New South Wales meet. Now you can hit three states within a minute. 
So this totem here is a geographical point of New South Wales, Queensland and South Australia. <laughs> pretty common place to come to now but still pretty cool. What does it say? Cameron Corner, yep blah 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 blah, so and so, so and so, 11th of June 1969. This was erected. Pretty cool. Got some fellow motorbike riders up there, might go and see what they're all about. They got some bigger bikes than me. They've probably never seen a DRZ in all their glory though. <laughs> might want to swap me. No way. No way. But yeah, so this is the um, three states meeting. South Australia, New South Wales, and Queensland, and no coronavirus. Oh, <laughs> how good's that for a urinal? Just a trough. Sink. Gentlemen, please don't let your abilities mix up with your ambitions. Take one step closer. Oh, I could reach from here for sure. It's an absolute pleasure to be riding through this absolute ancient landscape. It's like millions of years of the sun beating down on it. Red sand. You look to your left, you look to your right, it's all the same, but it's still so different each hill you go over. I'm so thankful there's tracks like this that aren't too mainstream and not hard and you know, civilised, but it still allows you to come out and enjoy the outback. It's an absolute adventure rider's dream to be out here amongst this sort of stuff. So I'm on the Shreslecki track, travelling south. Yeah, it is a great track, but corrugation is the whole way along. And I'm doing about 110 to try and stay on top of them, but it still just rattles the bike. I would hate to feel what it's like on this doing like 60k an hour, like your bike would fall apart. Sort of 120, you get a little bit above them, but unfortunately, with the headwind, my bike's working pretty hard. 110's about all I want to do, but it's just so many corrugations, and if you have anything loose in your bike, it's gonna definitely, it's gonna definitely fall off. Hopefully, when I stop, and my bum's getting so sore after a break soon, I haven't lost anything because, um, yeah, it's just rattling me all through my body. I can't even see out of my side mirrors because they're vibrating so much. Plenty of big trucks on this road, that's for sure. Just gotta fang it past it. In the way, and fuck it, on you go again. This road's flat as a tack, recently been graded, so loving life in that sense. But I can 100% say that having a big adventure bike like the KTM or BMW would outdo a DRZ in a heartbeat here. You'll be comfortable, you're doing 140, 150k now if you're prepared to speed, obviously. Um, and you'll have plenty more in the engine to go if you had to. I'm now doing 110, 115, revving the tits off her because of a bit of a headwind and just fighting the whole time to bash against the wind. Still love my DRZ but yeah definitely the downside now is showing. I'm getting pretty bored on this bit of road so um let me try some freestyling. I'm on my DRZ riding in Australia. I'm a Dutchman Aussie man on my bike and I'm riding along. My DRZ is humming so well she's such a mighty beast. The DRC is going to the Simpson Desert to meet all these other friends. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Man, I'm losing my marbles on this road. Have a look at that. Just a sea of desert, low lying shrubs, and just sand as far as the eye can see. You feel pretty, um, pretty insignificant out here, that's for sure. When you realise the expanse of this country. Come on Sally, you can do it. Big old road train. Everybody, this is um, the famous Lani from, where are you from? Fiji, Bula! <laughs> we're from Fiji, yet yeah, we're in um, South Australia on the Strasleki track. Anyway, Lani gave me a banana, an apple, advice, life lessons. <laughs> and he also told me that the police officer recently, he towed out, still gave him a ticket even though he helped him out, unbelievable. But, Lani, I'd like to say thank you. No worries. Would you, like to, would you like to say anything? 
but just a safe trip and uh, he's traveling safe he's a very strong man and a very good man <laughs> yeah. thank you very much Lani I really Thanks appreciate it Aussie legends from Fiji so Lani there behind me he pulled over next to me he gave me that apple he gave me the banana but he asked me what I was doing I told him I was having something to eat he goes oh I'll just wait with you that way you don't have to overtake me because he'd be on this road for 80 kilometers he assured me that um, Arcarula is pretty easy going to get to it 150, 160k wished me luck he said I'm an ambassador for Australia and he was the nicest bloke I've ever met and he was telling me this story that he helped some lady change a tyre but when he pulled over she got scared and locked herself in the car because of his skin colour never judge a book by its colour people never judge a book by its cover so when I stopped on the Streslecki track to uh, take this left turn I didn't actually think it was the right track because the beginning of it didn't really look very obvious and the sign was so worn out you could fairly barely read anything so I kind of thought maybe it's an old track but um, I got my Billy Goat app and I haven't paid for the subscription I refuse to do that but it'll still ping you without reception and bam straight away I'm on the right track it did also help that Lani pulled over and gave me some um, advice but definitely handy to have one of those offline um, apps and he I should have the HEMA one but I just don't want to pay for it so I've got the old school map on hard copy but it's pretty hard to pinpoint yourself in a grid that's 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers or 50 by 50 kilometers anyway yeah Billy Goat up being pretty handy that's for sure we're so so remote right now like I never would have thought in my 20s that in my 30s I'd be out here on my own riding along in the absolute middle of nowhere but I tell you what I wouldn't have it any other way the road that I'm on is called um, Mount Hopeless Road um, and it goes on the eastern side of the, the Gammon Ranges or Arcarula or Flinders Ranges it's all bloody one big pile of ranges really but I tell you what I was a bit hesitant on this track yeah it's a bit rocky but there's no corrugations or none so far it's actually more enjoyable than the Strozlaki track because um, it's smoother it's not shaking my bike around everywhere you've got to definitely pay more attention because you have to dodge the, uh, the little rocks that will make your front wheel wash out but your bike's not getting thrown around and rattled to pieces so not a bad alternative those mountains getting closer and closer pretty cool considering the last thousand kilometers there's only been a couple little sand dunes and pretty much flat otherwise and then bam fucking mountains just like that on my way to Arcarula now I've got 30 kilometers before my official stop and then I'm just going to explore for an hour or so to find where I want to camp for the night hopefully this place has got petrol otherwise I'm up shit creek like I was at Tilpa even though that worked out in the end a few rain clouds in the distance I hope it doesn't bloody rain again it's not meant to but that means jack shit these days I can smell the rain literally can smell it and I feel oh yeah fucking raining again how oh, unlucky am I this trip of rain I knew it I could bloody smell it oh, I've got 12 kilometers to go and maybe I'll have some shelter please don't be a torrential downpour you're fucking kidding me there's dead set blue sky on my left and on my right and behind me and I've just ridden into a bloody torrential downpour I'm saturated again all for 10 minutes of riding and now it's about to blow over yeah well gammon rangers you can go F yourselves I'm not happy at all oh what rubbish look it's blue sky just there that's shit all the uh, fossils in the stone not a bad backdrop, pity I can't stay here I was going to try and stay at um, Arcarilla village but all booked out, can't accommodate, can't give me any food it was actually pretty useless to be honest um, which is a shame so now I've sort of been forced out, you can't even camp next to the building like all the other old country pubs so now I've got to head out and find somewhere to camp between here and Mari but I've only really got an hour of daylight left um, and you can't really just camp anywhere in here so it's all mountains too it's not even like I can hide somewhere we'll see what happens 
I'm sure I'll come up with something. I certainly don't want to be riding in the night time. That's not going to be safe with all the kangaroos. Like usual, my daylight's coming to an end. I still haven't found a campsite. I'm traveling west, so the sun's in my bloody eyes. I can't see shit. <laughs> I never learned my lesson, hey. I never learned. Oh, unbelievable ants. Just freaking figure your shit out. I might have a campsite here. Let's have a look. A storm brewing in the background. So if that's coming my way, it's kind of rough out my tent up so I got something to sit under. I'm not gonna just bloody get wet again. So I ended up using that campsite that I pulled it on. I'm not sure what it's called, but I couldn't believe it. That storm there was right above me. It was just threatening to drop rain for a second time. And I was trying to fucking get this tent up. But as you can see, all here is the most bloody rockiest campground I've ever been on. I couldn't get any of my pegs in. They were all bending. And then the wind picked up. And my tent nearly blew away. But look, it's all sorted. It's all settled. The rain's um, gone over the mountain, thankfully. The tent's just up. The motorbike's been quickly serviced and is looking in pretty good condition, considering. And, and, I should be able to get a campfire going. So, thumbs up to me and um, we got it done. Just walking up to this rock face that I found with this hole in it. And on the entry, there's dead animals everywhere. So I wonder what kind of beast in here. Look, more dead animals up here too. Bloody hell. House of Horrors. Oh, what is in there? Hmm, maybe a big old yowie. Look, more bones. It's like a graveyard. Jesus. And I'm the dumb shit camping at the base of it. Oh. Probably safe to say we should uh, leave that one. Look, I won't bother you tonight if you don't bother me. You've got enough bones here. Don't need to take mine as well. Whew, crazy. Waking up on um, morning four, just getting my bike ready, but have a look at the view. My road actually goes between that right big mountain and the left little mountain, um, but the sun's just absolutely smashing off the rocks, making it bright red. I don't know what it looks like on camera, but it's far more redder than I think what it'll appear just beautiful not one person here um just me all night and i did find a portaloo up that way so i was able to do my number two in peace and quiet and not have to try and squat on my old knees so that was um a little slice of heaven right there so i've just posted my um second photo of my father on this big old ghost gum um, he absolutely loved the Flinders Ranges. Came here a few times on his four-wheel drive. Um, one of the places we're meant to ride together. But he always loved sitting on his farm in Victoria overlooking um, the sunset from his vantage point. So this photo shows the sunset that way, but it also gets the sunrise reflecting off the red rock. So I'll post the longitude latitudes um, or MGRS grid references. Uh, anyone's riding past, it's only about 30 metres off the campground, which is only 200 metres off the road. And I'll post all that in the, um, in the video too, but yeah, it'd be much appreciated if you drop me a um, comment on any of my YouTube clips, let me know it's here, and I'll be back in a few years anyway to suss it out. But um, rest in peace to my father, we miss you. So the second photo is posted on that big ghost gun right in front, and where I am is the last campsite from the road, which is only about 200 metres. So day four started, just winding my way out of the Gammon Ranges Road. Awesome bit of road to start the day with the sun behind me making everything red ahead of me. Uh, a bit rocky on the road, but it's all right. Uh, first stop's Mari, total fuel refill and water. And then from, oh shit, just locked it up then. And then um, from there, I'm gonna head to, up to Udadatta to Halogen Bay turn off. And then I'll decide if it's worthwhile going there to camp or just continue up to Udadatta to make progress towards the Simpson Desert. 
because my days are very long and I feel like I'm gonna be behind by a half a day, which I can manage, but I'd rather not. But I'll decide that later in the trip. But for now, just enjoying this awesome, awesome scenery. Oh, and on another bloody down point, my inflatable mattress has got a hole in it and only lasts for about an hour when I gotta blow it up again. So, oh man, was I stiff this morning. Not good at all. What a spectacular view. I know it's just mounds on the earth, but oh mate definitely makes it worthwhile all the kilometers in the saddle quite a few people say to him why did you do so many kilometers and not enjoy the sights and stop more I go when I stop I get bored of in 10 minutes I'd rather just keep riding and see as much as I can I'm sure in the future I'll slow down and do a bit more sightseeing when I get to places but when you're on your own it's pretty boring so I'd rather just yep keep hitting the kilometers the bike just hums along and see as much as possible deserts in South Australia looking for Mari Roadhouse doesn't look like a roadhouse but I guess it'll do wow a dollar 95 a litre I'm not complaining but never seen fuel that expensive outback prices uh, all right let's get some mud on the bike Just leaving Mari now, just hopped on the Udam Data track in the dirt section and I was told by the locals, uh, where are you going? I said, oh, Udam Data way. They go, oh, good luck. I go, why is that? They said, I oh, just downpoured with rain um, two days ago on the tracks in shit condition, but you'll be right. So <laughs> that doesn't sound too promising. And um, they had a bit of a laugh go, oh, you'll be right, but it's going to be slow going, which is not what I wanted to hear. And I can already see the road isn't pretty shitty condition finally finally i'm on the udanada track man this is nothing uh, special compared to some of the tracks i've already done on this trip but this is my bloody highway to mount there in the simpson desert and i've been trying to do it for years finally finally my milestone is getting reached i've got about 500 plus k to mount there according to the locals my camp spot idea is shit house so as far as i'm concerned I'm just revving the tits off my little yellow beast. They get as far as I... Oh, we don't want to end up like that car. They get as far as I can along this trail. 110, 120, I'm overtaking people left, right, centre. And fuck it, I'm just going for it. When I stopped at Mari, there was that bloke on the other DRZ, which I thought was my bike. And he was an older fella. He was probably 60, 65. So credit to him, but he's still riding. But he just came down the Birdsville track and did a bit of the Streslecki track. And he goes, oh mate, he goes, you better check all your bolts, they'll vibrate loose. I said, nah man, my bike's doing well, I've checked it all. He goes, yeah, mine's all come loose. I was like, well, what speed were you doing? He goes, oh, about 60. I go, mate, that's why your bike's rattled to pieces. 60k an hour of those corrugations. No, 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 you've got to do like 100k an hour plus. He just looked at me like I was nuts and I've got a feeling He's never tried to go faster in order to make the trip safer. Um, and he goes, oh, that's too fast. I went, no, that's what you've got to do to plane over it. So hopefully he takes my advice on his way home because he's got plenty more corrugations to go, the poor bugger. But, you know, credit to him, he's still out here riding, being much more cautious for his own safety. But um, I feel like going faster sometimes he's your friend.
Look at this old shack. It's along the Uda Data track. I'm sure many people have seen it or have travelled it, but I haven't. And I'm um, sure it's not looking too good now, but it's got plenty of plenty of history behind it. Just in the middle of nowhere. Literally. I guess it would have been an old farmer's shearing shed or something. It's a shame that fuckers have gone in there and bloody graffitied in there, but anyway, not much you can do about that. Doesn't look structurally too good anymore. Guess you could camp here if you had to. Earth dream. Love hearts. Must be the love room. Yeah, right. Nice backyard, though. That's for sure. Here's another crazy bugger. No engine. No nothing, just going for it. What a legend. You gotta salute those sort of dudes. Looks like Lake Air's got water in it. Make a bit of a pit stop. Guess that's the perks of having a motorbike. I've just came here and I'm bogging down and I don't plan on getting bogged. Go, 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 shit. Not worth it. <laughs> abort, abort. Fuck. Ah, I missed my gear. Go, get back out. Phew. That's close. I can confirm there's water out there, but I was getting more bogged down by the second, so it's certainly not worth that risk, being the only idiot that need rescuing out here. I don't even know if I'm allowed to be out here, to be honest, but why not? I'm only here once every 10 years, probably. Look at that. Awesome. I believe this is below sea level too, if that's a fact that I've, um, <laughs> I read somewhere on Google. I'm sure it's right. How my bike's set up now is um, what's working best for me. I've tried a few things over the trip. That top jerry can's empty, but the other two are full, um, and it rides absolutely beautifully. Nothing's moving, nothing's going anywhere. The one thing I did do is took someone's advice and used rope for when it's full, but straps for when it's empty. And um, right now, that appears to be leaking a bit of fuel, but it's alright. That's working really well. Nothing's vibrated loose yet, touch wood. Um, I've got my accelerator cable on the outside of my bag there. And I've got my rear sprocket on the outside of that bag there. My melting issues stopped, so I'll get some new plastics. And for now, I'll mount these lower. They seem to work really good down there because it's closer to a bracket. Whereas I used to have them much further up here. Um, and then I always make sure this jerry can when it's full sits behind my Repto Packs bracket and that pushes against that. But when it's empty, I sit it on top of it to give myself some more room um, in the cockpit. Bike's still running like a dream. My hammock's on the front, that's working well. And I just put an extra one of these to stop all the bounce with the downward bouncing and that seems to be working well but my bloody father is falling off I need to retape him I'll fix that up later have a look at the views bloody spectacular absolutely smashing it along here 120k an hour I'm trying to face my camera down so the wind goes over my head and a guy like this and smashes me in the face. Woo, Sally's working hard now. Come on girl. We have another 90k to go, we can call it quits of the day. The Uda Data track. It's been the longest stretch of my trip by far and it's just never ever ending. And I've just parked my bike in the middle of it. To give you an idea, it just goes on and on and on and on. Kind of had enough of it, but if you want a sense of being remote, this is it. I have never been so happy to see a town in my life. I am over today and I need to stop, and it's going to be happening here in Uda Data. 
thank you, thank you, thank you. We made it. I've never been so happy to see a pink building. If I was in Sydney, I'd be like, what a joke. But out here, it's just legendary. Oh, yes. The pink roadhouse has saved my life. And the pink truck and the pink station wagon. Oh, how legendary is this? Uden out of Roadhouse. Um, this is the worst room I've ever seen in my life. Yet I'm the happiest to be in this room that I've ever been in my life. So I just can't believe that all this stuff here fits on my bike. Uda Dada Pink Roadhouse, thank you for your hospitality. It was the crappiest, shittiest, yet loveliest, beautiful combination I've ever had in my life. It's been a pleasure. Highly recommend staying here if it's halfway through your trip. 70 bucks, you get a room, you can de-kit your bike, check it out, have a bed, and then continue on. There's no better feeling than waking up in the morning and taking off on these roads. You got the sun on your back. I got my shadow riding with me. Hello, buddy. And it's always the excitement of the day and what's to come. And as the day goes on, it gets, <laughs> it gets shittier and shittier and you just want to call it a day. But in the beginning, it's awesome. Beautiful fresh air, crisp air too. Much better than the Sydney shit I've been bloody inhaling all my life. There's this bloody bike rider again following me. He's been following my whole bloody trip. I can't seem to shake him. He's a bloody good rider though, that's for sure. Classic. An all black DRZ trying to outdo me. Yeah, well wait till later today, mate, when you're behind me. <laughs> Sucker. The last night of the bike, I took everything off it. Um, even though it's had a hard, hard trip, the Simpson Desert's going to be the, um, the big toll on it. Everything's looking good. I've only had one bolt come loose that I could find, so I quickly nipped that up. And that was on my tool tube. So that was um, self-designed, not actual bike itself. There's no cracks, there's no damage. Um, I haven't chewed any oil yet. I ended up putting a new oil filter, uh, not oil, sorry, a new air filter in. Uh, the air filter is pretty dirty, but it looks halfway point. New air filter, why not? And if it gets really choked with sand in the desert, I've still got the other one to put back in if need be. The bike's running well, um, and it's good just to take all the kit off and just rearrange it. So I've emptied all my side bags of tools to the best part, and I put them up top, which is a bit awkward for now. But when I get to uh, Mount there, I'll unload all my water up in those side bags so that it weights nice and low. I'm officially on Mount Dare Road. Um, my nav says 180k, but the sign says 225k. So either way, it's approximately 200k's. I can't take my shortcut that I wanted. Um, I've been told that's still closed, which is the public access route number eight I have in my um, books. So I'll just keep following this until directed otherwise. All of a sudden, I've got about 200 kilometers. Phenomenal scenery along the Mount there Trail. Um, compared to the Uda Dada, it's only really 10k away from there, but there's no rock, it's not barren, there's plenty of life. Complete different scenery altogether. It's so weird how it's not that far away though. I have changed directions though, maybe that's why, but this is just so enjoyable to ride along. I've just been detoured off the main track and that's the reason why there's all water out there and that's what caused all the problems out here um, not too long ago well it's not really oh uh, shit 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 oh shit gotta pay attention I can't be fucking looking off the road oh that was a close call because I was trying to film the water oh uh, maybe I'll just pull over Whew. that got the hairs going it's all about waters over the main track, I think. So I can only hope that it's going to take me around um, because it's not coming up where I'm going. Oh, well, that detour wasn't too bad. Only an extra few K, luckily, because it wasn't showing on my map. Bit of a water crossing in the Simpson Desert. Hmm. Should just go for it. Ah, oh, yeah, wasn't too deep. amazing we're now officially in the desert and it's more life than ever 
compared to all the other stuff that would deem not a desert. The word desert's quite deceiving at times, I guess. Originally, so originally my idea was to go along that road there and fill up with 45 litres of fuel from Udanana and cut out Mount Dare. Now that's closed and underwater, I've been told, and obviously the sign says so. So I'm doing the more generic route, which is to Mount Dare because it's an iconic place to visit. Since I haven't taken up public access route 8 and I continue on Mount Dare Road, I can tell you what, north of that intersection, the road gets in bad condition. Um, all these rocks, I don't know why, I have in my head gibber rocks, something like that. It's the same sort of condition I had on my trip when I went the dingo fence. And you just, if you're gonna get a flat tire, this is when you're gonna get one. It's so hard to dodge them all. You try not to hit the big ones. You try to avoid what looks sharp. You don't wanna to go too slow still because it slows your trip up. Um, it's just so tiring on the body trying to continually scan for rocks, 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 and you can't take your eyes off the road for one second. Every now and again you come across a big one and you don't wanna hit that sucker. I've just had a stop because I felt like there's something loose on my bike in the front end but look the wheel still spins, the front wheel doesn't have any movement in it and the handlebars maybe there's a bit of looseness in the head stem but I can't really pick anything so it could just be in my head and once those things get in your head you constantly think there's something wrong with your bloody bike. I'm in the middle of absolutely nowhere though um, but I can see a water tower right over there so that's promising if you were stuck here you might be able to get some water this has become a very brutal track it doesn't look so bad probably on camera but just the rocks are just pulverizing my bike i can just feel it taking its toll on the bike and if anything was to go wrong it would be um this track here i believe but look i gave it a check over she still seems pretty good so we'll just keep on going um Got a sign saying go down this way. Not body dropped my bike in a sink yet, no way. That's not worth it, I haven't even gotten to Simpson yet. Who would have thought river crossings in the desert? Must have been as good as the road signs get out here. Finky Mount there, right, but kind of looks like left. <laughs> And then that sign's half hanging off saying no through road, I'm assuming. Uh, the outback. A Ringa waterhole. This would be an awesome place to camp. I'm either 20 or 40k out from out there, depending on which sign's correct. But I've had enough of it. It's just such a shit track. I can hear a grader going right now. Apparently there's one over there. I just saw a sign. So they're doing their best to fix it up. But um, it was just so brutal on the bike. So, so brutal. She's holding together, but I don't think she's happy about it. Even in the middle of the outback. They've got a bloody grader going to work on you, buddy. What a legend. I wonder how much he gets paid to work out in paradise. I'm officially in the Wichara National Park. Gives a pretty stern sign about heading into Simpson Desert and what to do and what not to do and the risks involved and when it's open and closed. And then this is a sign of where we're going. So Mount Dare should be coming up in about 30 kilometers. Thankfully. You can tell they've been grading the crap out of this. Look how high the banks are on the sides. It's very loose still. I'll tell you what, when I knew I was coming to the Simpson Desert, which I'm officially in, I did not expect it to look like this. Green, lush, life, and all of the above. I don't know where the red sand is, but I'm sure it's to come still. Ah, yep, I've seen this photo many times on the internet. First thing, petrol.
woken up the night after the Simpson Desert Crossing. I feel like I've been hit by a steamroller. I feel like I'm laying in my tent and a steamroller came around and just ran me over. Every muscle in my body is... I don't even have any strength in my hands at the moment. They're all worn out. Um, what a brutal test of fitness and bloody old saying, man and machine. We made it though and um, I haven't started the bike up so hopefully it starts. But last night I got to the pub... They couldn't accommodate, they could barely even give me any food, but they sat me out in the beer garden in a cold. I spent a hundred dollars on two main meals, I was so hungry. Um, but now we just got to get home to Brisbane. It's been an absolute massive, massive trip. I was still at 1500k to go, so me and Sally, the Suzuki, we're just going to keep on going. I look like I've aged 20 years too, I need a haircut, a shave, but life is still good. Well, I've just left Birdsville, everybody. Um, the pub couldn't accommodate me for accommodation, so I had to set up in the dark at the local caravan park. I spent $100 on food because I was so hungry. I'm beat to shit, but I've now got 1,700 kilometers with um, twisted up triple clamps. My handlebars are facing towards the right, but I couldn't be bothered fixing it. Um, that's after a few falls in the desert. My side mirror here is just hanging on, but I'll fix that. Otherwise, I chewed around 200 mil of oil. I knew that would happen of all the over revving and dropping it and spitting out oil in the overflow box, so I've topped that up. No punctures, touch wood yet either, so fantastic there. Um, I'm doing well though, and now it's just homeward to Brisbane. I'm not going to Inaminka, I don't have time. I've got two days to do 1700 kilometers, and hopefully, we see some cool pubs on the way back. So, the trip's certainly not done yet but I'm not going to be able to do too much sightseeing. So my next stop, 350k away, is a town called Windara. No idea what it's about, I haven't Googled it because I wasn't going to go there. But my trip and itinerary has changed now after make up time. So hopefully, it's still a cool little iconic town. Hello! <laughs> you're lucky you're cute. Get off the road, you silly buggers. Don't run back in front of us. Have a look at that, some wedge tail eagles on the side of the road. Oh, beautiful. This little skinny tar road cut through hundreds of kilometres of desert. Um, at the end of my trip now, I'm kind of thankful for it. I'd rather do a thousand kilometres of this than on the actual dirt. But my level of concentration has just diminished so much over the days. But I still feel like I'm in the desert at the very least. On the flip side, if I was starting my trip on this, I'd probably be fuming because I'd want to be in the dirt. Looks like some things are working out in my favour after all the rain in the beginning of the days. Oh, I can't believe it. I was doing 100k an hour my bike conked out. I was like, fuck, what happened there? It sounded like the engine blew up. But of all things, um, it choked out of a bit of fuel. So I had to tip my tank on the side to get some more fuel in there, but with this headwind I'm chewing far, far more fuel than I would normally, and I'm not going to get the 400 k's to the tank. Luckily I've got my 4 litre one on the back still full, but if I didn't have that, I'd, um, I reckon I'd be pushing it by the last sort of 10 to 5 k. So I'm just going to go a little bit slower and try to milk it so I don't have to unpack my rear jerry can. Coming into the town of Wind. Dari, which is good because I need fuel, water and supplies big time. Just ran out of fuel back there, lucky I had the four litre jerry cans, I wouldn't have made it. My landscape is slowly changing from out back to all semi-arid terrain. All the ground's covered in some form of grass or shrub. The trees are getting a bit more frequent, a bit bigger. Kind of a bit depressing, it means my outback journey is coming to an end. But all good things must come to an end, as they say. As I ride my final day of 900 kilometers into the sunrise, be finishing in a sunset, I think it's only a fitting time to do my final spiel for this video. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, many adventure riders out there understand the pitfalls, the positives, the negatives, and the fun that come along with each adventure. But when you get home the whole time looking back you just know it's an unbelievable ride this has been my best hardest funnest and longest adventure yet on my bike um, each one gets a little bit bigger and a little bit tougher
cannot thank enough my bike, how well it's performed, my DRZ and all its glory just keeps on giving to me. I know one day she'll let me down, but for now that day hasn't come. I can't speak highly enough of the bike. Also, to my father, every time I look in my rear vision mirrors, I expect to see him riding behind me like we used to. Obviously that's not happening anymore, so I hope you're happy where you are and you've been overlooking me while my ride and keep me safe. To my young son and young daughter, I can only hope when you get older to watch these videos that you two will fall in love with adventure riding and exploring and we can do it as a family and your father can show you where to go and what to do and we can have some fun together. To all other adventure riders out there, always my advice for you would be to plan a little bit, prep a little bit and just hit the open road. Ride within your means, ride where you want to go and just wing everything when you don't know where you are. Life's too short not to ride or four wheel drive or explore. Just get amongst it and have fun. If any of this information, this video has helped you on your rides, that's all I can hope for. I wish you all luck and hope to see you out there one day riding with me. Your Predator Adventurer signing out.